Hey everyone, welcome back to MLWorks. In this video, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic which is fine-tuning a transform model and using MLflow to capture the whole uh, fine-tuning process as part of MLflow artifact or MLflow metrics of uh, parameters. Okay, so in this video, we'll be talking about the training cycle of the fine-tuning process and then we'll be model logging it and then managing it and then we'll talk about the inference and deployment of uh, the model, fine-tuned model. Okay, so let's get started with this specific uh, cell where we are trying to what, ignore the warnings that come up while we are trying to load certain package or try to run certain uh, function or a code, right? So to do that, we'll be just uh, importing the warnings and the dot, filter warnings and ignore, okay? And this will ignore all the warnings, okay? So next is, we want to prepare the data set for the fine tuning process. So the first, what we have to do is we import all the important packages that are required. So first we'll be importing evaluate for evaluating the fine during the fine tuning process, how you want to evaluate your model. For that we'll use evaluate. And then we have NumPy for um, performing kind of a data transformation purpose. We can use a NumPy. And then we'll be using data set to load the data set, which in this case is SMS spam data set. Basically what we'll do is given a text message, we'll be understanding whether this message is a spam or a ham. Okay. So for this, we'll be using this specific data set. And when it comes to transformer, we'll be loading all these different modules, one for initializing the model, initializing the tokenizer, and then trainer for setting up the training object and then training arguments for different parameters required for training and then we'll create a pipeline out of that. And finally, of course, we import MLflow for uh, logging the model and keeping track of the performance metrics, parameters and everything. So here, if you see, uh, we load the data set using load data set function and we pass the data set name, which is SMS underscore spam. This will download the data set. Okay, once the data set is downloaded, what we do is we uh, split the data set into train and test in the ratio of 8 is to 2. So 80% of the data will be on the training side and 20% data will be on the test side. So once this train test split is done, what we do is, so till now we just uh, have it in terms of columns, okay, the data set in terms of columns. Now what we have to do is the model will take the data in the form of tokenized text. So for that, what we have to do is we have to take the raw data set, which is train underscore data set on test underscore data set and put it into tokenization function. And it will tokenize the data set or the text that we have, that sentence that we have, it will turn it into tokens, which is the acceptable format for a model. Okay. So here we have a tokenization process and the model that we are using is distilled BERT base uncased. Okay. This is the corresponding tokenizer for this specific model and we initialize the tokenizer here. And here we are defining our tokenization function and we are sending the all the parameters on how we want to tokenize the text. Okay, so the column that we want to uh, tokenize is SMS column and we are padding the data set, meaning consider you have small text of 64 tokens. Okay, but the maximum that you are accepting is 128. So what we can do is we can add additional 64 tokens to the existing 64 token from the uh, input text. Okay. And if you have more than 128 tokens, then what you can do is we can apply truncation such that it will uh, split at 128 tokens. And here we are setting the seed as 22 such that if you want to reproduce the experiment, uh, then you can use the seed as 22 and try it from your end as well. So here what we do is, uh, we try to tokenize the data set by mapping the tokenization function. Once the tokenization is done, we remove the column SMS and then we shuffle the data set. Similarly for test tokenized. Okay. So this is the part where we have done till now. We have loaded the data set. We have split it into train and test and then we have tokenized the data set. Next is when it comes to label, what we do is we turn the labels from zero zero represents ham and one represents spam. Okay. Sim vice versa in label to ID and ID to label. Okay. And we are initializing the model here, which is again, distilled bird base uncased. And we are mentioning there are two labels that we want to classify 
and the class uh, we also want to map send the mapping that we have uh, mentioned here and what is the label to id and id to label okay so this is how we have to initialize our model so let me first uh, run this okay so once this is done uh, let me run this where we have initialized the model so next is we are setting up the evaluation metric in this case we want to evaluate in terms of accuracy whether the model is able to accurately predict whether it is a ham or spam okay and we create something called as compute metric uh, def function and where we pass eval predict and we get the probability score and corresponding labels and finally get the accuracy score by the end of this function okay let me run this here what we are doing is we are configuring the training environment so this is the output directory once the trainer is done okay so whatever the training arguments that we want to pass for uh, distal bird okay so we are passing it here in the training arguments so output directory we have mentioned temp directory and the evaluation strategy is for every epoch we want to see what is the performance or what is the accuracy okay that is the way we want, we are going to evaluate our model or fine tune the model okay and for each device what we have is we are we are going to take eight samples for each device it both in terms of training and evaluation and logging step is every eight steps it will log and the number of epochs that we are going to train on is three epochs and here you have trainer where you are setting up the trainer where we pass our model which is distal bird uncased and the training arguments which we have initialized here and then our pass our training data set and training tokenized data set and test tokenized data set and while we are doing that we also want to evaluate at every epoch and we want to find the accuracy so that is the metric we are trying to uh, capture and understand okay so let me run this cell as well so this is just the initialization part we are not going to train anything here right now okay so this is just we are initializing the model and the trainer and the training arguments and while that's, that is happening okay let me just uh, set the tracking URA for MLflow this is where my ML server is running so let me show here okay yeah so if you see here I have started an MLflow server and it is running on 127.0.0.1 5000 port number and it has four uh, workers that is running in the back end so it has uh, trainer is initialized here let me run this one here MLflow set tracking URI so what will happen right if you don't send this you won't be able to see the uh, whatever the logged model the log metric on the UI of the MLflow so that's why we are setting it here and if you see here next we are setting the experiment what is the experiment name that we want to set for this ml flow experiment so this is spam classifier training and the most important part is this one where we are ml flow start run and running it has run and then we are uh, fine tuning the model on the data set so once this executes it will train the model in the back end and it will take some time to train so that will be logged uh, in the uh, this one in our ML flow because we are running it inside ML flow start run. Okay, so let me run this. So this is already okay. So let me change the name of this experiment. Not training, fine tuning, maybe. Okay, fine tuning. So yeah. So this will take around two minutes. Okay, we'll come back after two minutes and see what is happening here. So yeah, so now the training has got completed and we can see the training loss keeps decreasing and the validation loss also, it's going up and down. Okay, but in terms of accuracy, we are able to see there is incremental increase in accuracy. Okay, so we have run it for three epochs and we must be seeing a graph for three epochs. What was the loss? What was the... Uh, validation loss, training loss and other things right whatever the evaluation metrics that we have tried to capture okay so this is where we have fine tuned the model now now what we have to do is we want to create a pipeline here so what we do is we pass in inside the pipeline function we give the task name as text classification and we pass the trainer dot model and the batch size it can take is 8 and the tokenizer is the same what is corresponding to that model we have 
and then we are using CUDA because we have GPU in our system so we'll use CUDA as our device this is our fine tuned model which we are creating the pipeline for now uh, since we have fine tuned the model we can test the model now so here we have quick check uh, I have a question regarding the project development lifetime uh, timeline and allocated resources this is specifically how certain are you about John and Ringo can work together as writing this next song do we need to get uh, Paul involved okay so let me just pass this to the tuned model which we have created and pass this quick check okay so this looks like a ham it's not a spam it looks like a completely kind of what uh, not a spam kind of a text it doesn't look like okay so it is with the greater uh, confidence score 99.99 percent it is able to say this is a ham message okay so we have able to uh, validate the fine-tuned model now now what we want to do is we want to uh, log this model into ml flow okay so we want to update certain parameters or try to capture certain parameters with respect to the model so we want to do those things so what we do is first we take in the model config which is the batch size as 8 this is one of the parameters okay and then we want to pass the signature of the model okay signature doesn't it represents uh, the input what it is expected from the model and what is the kind of output it will generate okay so here this is the input it can take in a list of sentences okay and it will generate a uh, output for each of those sentences. This is the uh, output will look like. Okay, this is the signature for output. This is the signature for the input to the model. Okay, and this is the params for the model, which is model config and which contains batch size as eight. Okay, so up to eight sentences you can pass as your input to the model while doing the inference. So once that is done, okay, next is we have fine tuned the model. Now we want to log that model to MLflow. So what we use is something called as uh, MLflow uh, flavored for transformers. So this is called MLflow.transformers.log model. And we take the fine tuned model, which is tuned underscore pipeline. And we name it as fine tuned model. Okay. And the signature is, it represents what is the input and output that is expected by the model. And this is the sample input and out, uh, this is sample input for the model and the model config is that is the batch size as 8 and this represents the whole uh, logging that you want to do into the ml flow so let me run this here so this will log the model into ml flow now most important part so once we have fine tuned the model logged the model okay we should be able to load the model and test it out or such that you can use it for production or any other use case right that you can do so what we'll do is we'll just do mlflow.transformers.load model and pass the model URA now since we have executed this one okay this will generate a URA in the backend okay so if you see here these are something that is getting uh, created in the backend okay so we are just utilizing that information here and we are loading the model and we test the model again by uh, passing a validation text and then see what is the performance so it is like downloading the artifacts that is it's loading the model from the ml flow and then it will be trying to predict on this text so this is want to learn how to make millions with no effort click here now okay this looks like a spam text that's why it is able to uh, label it as spam with the confidence score of 99.96 percent okay so this is with respect to how to fine tune the model, how to log the model and uh, how to load the model, the log the model, how to load the log the model and perform inference. Now let us go to uh, this one, okay, MLflow UI and C. So this is the one which we have trained, which is a spam classification and I remove this. So if you see here, eight minutes back, we executed this one. This was the latest run. Okay, let me, okay, if you can see here, let me see okay okay first let us see here okay so here we are and this is our model fine tuned model and it took around 6.7 minutes total duration and here we have all the metrics which is evaluation loss evaluation runtime number of epochs that it ran for and the train steps per second it took evaluation sample per second total flops and uh, this is evaluation accuracy and this is the loss evaluation steps per second learning rate grad norm 
okay so we have a whole lot of metrics here to understand and let me see go here model metrics here yeah. so here you will see across per epoch what happened right for the third epoch and this is the step okay and evaluation accuracy we have it here and for each uh, step different steps the corresponding evaluation accuracy we have it evaluation loss we can see okay it increases and then it decreases for evaluation loss now we have evaluation run time okay this is again increase and decrease and the number of samples per second evaluation steps per second this is the total loss this is the learning rate that is getting changed while we are fine tuning it this is the grand norm and we are seeing a whole lot of parameters here okay so this is with respect to all the metrics that we are capturing while we are fine tuning the model so is there any system metrics traces so we have the artifacts here where we have our uh, model here ml model and these are like corresponding json which contains the information regarding the model and let me do this one here we this is what safe tensors are present this is the tokenizer which is this is nothing but the model which got downloaded right from uh, uh, hugging face that is the part okay this is the part okay let me go back here if i can click here let's see if you can it, it also represents the same thing right that's like different way of looking at the same model i guess models if i see here graphs okay so this is the one is okay so there are like it is able to show what for the two experiments what is the graph okay for the two runs okay we have done so before i ran this uh, model uh, in this video there was another experiment that was done okay which failed and it is able to capture that also so there are these everything is captured here yeah so i think uh, let me see click what is this and let me click this one There's nothing here, nothing here. Okay, cool. So I am primarily interested in only these graphs, actually. Okay, so what we are able to do is we are able to understand how the uh, training cycle runs. Okay, what are the what is the metric that is getting generated, and what are the uh, things you have to look out for in the loss or in terms of performance accuracy score. So all those can be evaluated here while you are running the experiment itself. Okay. so uh, we are at the end of the video i guess okay so we have done a bunch of things we have we are able to see the training cycle in terms of epochs and we managed to log the model and we are able to do the inference from the logged model from the ml flow okay so with that i'll conclude this video thank you for watching